Thanks, Yaz, for the intro. I'm Matt from Caldera. I think we all agree with this thesis. Blockchains are going modular, and basically, you know, I think the best way to describe modularism is basically making it as easy as possible to build blockchains by abstracting out, you know, different layers of the stack. Um, let's see. This is maybe a little bit of a self-aggrandizing slide. Um, you know, basically, I do think there is, like, a bit of a, you know, through line through here. You know, I was around in the Bitcoin era. Most of you were talking about payments. You know, then people were talking about general purpose computation. Then there was freedom of choice to kind of, like, choose which, you know, L1, choose from a small set of L1s, you know, which one makes the most sense for your application. And then there's modular blockchains. Again, a little self-aggrandizing to have only us on there, you know, wanting to include Celestia and the other DA layers who shall not be named and Eclipse and Skip and everyone else. <laughs> um, but, you know, basically it's like the freedom to really, you know, change anything you want on any layer of the blockchain. Um, and I think that's super powerful. Um, we'll skip this slide, basically, you know, app chains are things, whatever. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> app chains equals freedom. Um, you know, you can do more, whether that's throughput, whether that's improving UX via, you know, certain aspects of customization, right, changing the gas token of your project, moving gas costs entirely, you know, different levels of gas extraction, account extraction, um, and as well, of course, as, as the Skip folks talked about, you know, different ways of, of uh, extracting revenue or giving revenue back to your community via, you know, MEV or bridge fees or transaction fees or anything like that. Um, also, I want to mention here, you know, permissioning access to the chain. I think it's like a little against, you know, a lot of the ethos of, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of like hardcore crypto maxi folks. But I think, you know, the ability to, you know, to construct kind of like, you know, to kind of choose the layer of the level of decentralization, you know, will bring a lot more kind of like, more like centralized web 2.5 actors in the space. Because I think it's, you know, on the whole, pragmatically pretty important, even if we don't necessarily like a lot of those conclusions. Um, but of course, app chains are just really hard to build. Um, you know, and that's not just on the like protocol level side, you know, of hiring engineers using the Cosmos SDK, you know, figuring out how to incorporate tenderbit or you know, the various offshoots, you know, your state transition function, figuring out who's gonna validate the chains. It's also like a lot of the kind of like standard web to higher level infrastructure pieces, you know, figuring out who's gonna run your nodes how you're gonna run your nodes, how you're gonna orchestrate them, you know, those pieces of infrastructure that you know de developers tend to expect, block explorers, indexers, developer-facing APIs, the graph, all those things. And you know, the set of those uh, services is, is only increasing. Like, you know, if you were to go back, you know, five years ago, a lot of people were just you know writing smart contracts and still be deploying them. Now, you know, a lot of uh, you know blockchain apps, they have dependencies on the graph or certain centralized indexing services or you know, opens up a defender all these types of things. And so, you know, we want to be able to provide all of those services to, you know, help teams make viable blockchains that developers can get started using really quickly. Um, so, yeah, this is what we do. We uh, help people launch OP stack, optimism-based chains um, that are fully customizable all across the stack. You know, they can pick their uh, DA layer, whether that's posting data natively on Ethereum or Polygon or whatever EVM chain they choose to settle on. Um, or using Celestia, we'll cover that up. <laughs> um, the, you know, they can take their settlement layer right now. We support basically any EVM chain. Um, they, we, we also, you know, allow them to make, uh, you know, we allow them to add the infrastructure they need, you know, block explorers, bridge SDKs, NFT marketplaces, bridge UIs, a lot of those kind of like table stakes, higher level pieces of infrastructure that applications tend to need. Um, we also allow them to do kind of like node level customization, you know, whether that's modifying the gas token, potentially adding custom EVM pre-compiles, that sort of thing, and the set of you know capabilities we have there is only expanding. Uh, and then deploy, um, you know, they can deploy the chain on any, as I said, any EVM compatible, you know, L1 or L2. Um, and we handle all the dirty work when it comes to DevOps and orchestrating Optimism nodes, which is actually a fairly annoying problem uh, for teams who are you know building that themselves. Um, yeah, again, this is kind of salesy. Uh, I will skip most of it. Basically, we are based on the OP stack, the Optimism code base. Um, you know, generally, I think people have different opinions on this, but for now, it's probably the most robust, open source, optimistic world code base in existence. And we, you know, are really encouraged and excited by all the development that's happening on the OP stack, including, you know, Base and Mantle, and, you know, us and other folks who are going to all contribute upstream to that. Uh, we're also live in production now, so we can spin up a chain. If you're interested in finding, you know, spinning up a chain for your project, come find us after this talk. We'd be happy to do that for you. Um, and of course, because we're EVM compatible, we're compatible with all existing developer tooling. And I think this is one of the things that sets the OP stack apart is that it's basically running Geth under the hood. And so that means, you know, basically anything that depends on Geth 
get interfaces. Um, you basically get compatibility there for free. Um, yeah, again, we are engineers. We're not graphic designers, so uh, you, can, you can tell. Um, but you know, basically, we we just we want to be kind of like an all-in-one uh, stock, especially for like those higher-level features, APIs, JSON RPC nodes, SDKs, block explorers, you know, interfaces for common uh, utilities, and as well, we want to support those like chain-level customizations as well. Um, yeah, I think this is the last slide. Uh, yeah, we're working in production with a lot of uh, a lot of teams both on like, the gaming side, uh, also on like, the DeFi side, and also kind of more experimental gaming infrastructure, on-chain CTFs, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, we don't have a slide for this, but um, plugs, come find us if you're interested in launching a rollup, if you're interested in playing around with the test net called Era Rollup, and also we are hiring, we recently just closed the round, hiring across systems, product, you know, engineering roles, and also just general growth and design stuff. So, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Questions? Who are you uh, partnering with for the on-chain CTF? Uh, that is Waterfall slash Curva. Okay, cool. So yeah, they're building that, and we've you know we've been helping them you know do a lot of stuff on chain. So they're currently <laughs> using us in testnet, hoping to go to mainnet and mainnet for pretty soon. Any more? Um, so it's, it's very much of a business-like question, but how do you guys like, make money? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, you know, so actually, currently, some of these folks are paying us with a SaaS model. Okay. And so, like, I think there are some nice things about that. Like, it allows us to, you know, kind of like align incentives or like, you know, it's it's kind of like you get what it says on the tin, right? Like, they pay a fixed amount. You can have SLAs, especially with how rollups are architected right now. Right. That sort of stuff is really important. That being said, like, we are. It's certainly not settled internally, and we might be thinking about other models. One of the things we're like really trying to prioritize is making this accessible for like hackathon teams and small developers to just like launch their own thing. And so having like an enterprise sales process is like the opposite of what you should do uh, when you want to do that. So we're gonna we're trying to find some model that you know makes the most sense. Um, with regards to like tokens, I think is like kind of the implicit question <laughs> there. Ask token, but yeah, we. I mean, it's like an interesting question. I think like. Infrastructure tokens have had like a mixed, you know, sort of success rate. And what we don't want to do is like, we don't want to, for example, like, you know, bolt on a token onto that and run like a parachain auction type of deal, which like, you know, removes a lot of the, the kind of like benefits you would have of running rollups in the first place. So token is not totally settled for us, um, but if it is, it'll look, we'll do something that makes sense and, you know, stays true to the ethos of allowing smaller developers to use the tech. Nice. Yeah, Nick. I have a lot of questions, but one of them is, um, so you guys specifically, it seems, or I guess I didn't realize this, but I thought you guys were only settling on Ethereum, but you're also settling like Polygon settlement. Is there a reason why you're choosing settled rollups versus sovereign rollups? Or... Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. I think part of it is just, you know, it comes down to like preference of builders. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, we don't take like a super strong stance on this either way. The one thing we found is that um, number one, like a lot of teams, they want that like, trust minimized bridge between the L2 and some base chain. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you know, the folks we're working with, they don't want to necessarily be positioning themselves as a completely separate new chain. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to position themselves as like, you know, we're still on this ecosystem that like made our app or like the, the you know, they're strongly tied with the community of, but they still want to kind of get the benefits of running that chain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, I think like, you know, we're talking to some other folks for whom it doesn't really matter that much. Um, and so there, I think, you know, a lot of it just came down to us, you know, liking the OP stack, wanting to build with that, and sort of, you know, wanting to help other people stay on top of that as well. But we don't have, like, a super strong philosophical, you know, opposition towards sovereign chains, and I think it's mostly just kind of comes down to the user base we're targeting. Uh, somebody else had a question? I'll ask another one. Sure. Um, what like what features do you think the OP stack is most glaringly missing? Like what, what would you wish that they would build like fastest? Like semi yeah. sequencing, fraud proofs. Well I mean fraud proofs are the obvious <laughs> answer, right? I mean I'm confident they're gonna get to it eventually. Um, or hopefully sooner rather than later. I think you know that's the thing and you know that the OP stack desperately needs. Um, and, and as well like 
you know, we would much rather there be fraud proofs because then we're not, you know, relied upon for security, mm -hmm. right? And so we'd rather be able to use that and that would be super helpful with BE. I think there are like a lot of other kind of uh, product, you can call them product level uh, features that the OP stack could use. You know, things like account abstraction, it's in really high demand. We're probably just gonna build that ourselves. Um, you know, basic like gas abstraction, being able to use other tokens for gas, you know, that's something that we needed to build and that we support that, I, you know, as far as I know, currently the OP stack, at least when we build the feature, the OP stack doesn't support. So like a lot of things like that. Um, also, I think there are some things that are kind of against optimism's ethos that pragmatically some projects might want. So like permissioning on the sequencer level, you know, whitelisting on the bridge, those are features that we can support for certain use cases and I don't think the optimism team is going to like, you know, really be super excited to build out those. Right. We have one more question. Uh, Gap, <laughs> Do you guys um, run the sequencer for those rollups? By default, yes. We allow the projects to launch, uh, to run them themselves. Like, we're happy to provide like a Docker container, a Terraform configs. You know, basically make it as low effort as possible for them to do so. Um, but you know, we found for a lot of the, the teams that we talked to, like I think a lot of teams in Web three, they have like they know how to write smart contracts. They know how to write like. UI interfaces that interact with smart contracts, and there's like a big hole in their team when it comes to like DevOps and infrastructure and cloud, um, especially now around like a lot of application you know level teams, and so a lot of them just prefer to let us run the sequencer. And a follow up: Do you guys have any regulatory problems because of that? Not currently. I think this is, <laughs> <laughs> this, is this is why I mean I, I think like we see like optimism and Arbitrum and like you know all these all the other like general purpose roll ups that have a lot more volume a lot more different kind of use cases than we do, like as kind of the canary in the coal mine. Like we think those will be the ones that are, you know, will be regulated first. But obviously with like the recent kind of like, you know, enforcement action and everything that the SEC is doing, like decentralized sequencing is one of those things that we're super interested in. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that we'd rather not build ourselves. And so we're really happy there's like Astria and like a lot of, you know, other teams working on this problem that we can hopefully plug into. All right, cool. Thank cool. you, Matt.